For this lesson, we're going to look at solving equations by factoring the applications or different uh, ways that we could use this. So, for the first part, it wants us to write a quadratic equation in general form with integer coefficients, which means that I can't leave them in fractions. So, if it says that my roots are negative 4 and 0, the first thing I'm going to write is, well, that means that one of the equations would be that x is equal to negative 4, and the other equation is x is equal to 0. If x is equal to negative 4, then when I balance it out, x plus 4 would equal 0, and I can see that I have one factor here, the other one already equals 0, and there's my other factor. So I'm going to take these two factors and write them as x times x plus 4 is equal to 0, and I'm just going to multiply it out. x squared plus 4x equals 0. There's my general form equation with no fractions or just integers that would give me these roots. In the second case, I would start by saying x is equal to 1 over 2, or x is equal to negative 2 over 3. I need to get rid of the fraction, so I'm going to divide both or multiply both sides by the denominator here, multiply both sides of this equation by 2. So I'm going to say that 2x is equal to 1, or 2x, when I move the 1 over, minus 1 is equal to 0. And there is one factor. I'm going to do the same thing on the right-hand side. I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 and get 3x is equal to negative 2. So I got rid of my fraction. And when I move the negative 2 over, 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. And there is my other factor. So I can state that 2x minus 1 times 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. And when I foil this out, I'm going to get 6x squared plus 1x minus 2 is equal to 0. And there's my general form equation. If I'm applying it with problem solving, for the first one, a stone is thrown upwards in the air and travels according to the quadratic function. The height is a function of time is equal to negative 5 t squared minus 10 t plus 40. Algebraically determine the time at which the stone will hit the ground, which means that I want to algebraically determine the time or t value when h is a function of t is equal to 0 when it hits the ground. So I can say that 0 is equal to negative 5 t squared minus 10 t plus 40. Well in this case I don't like having the negative t value, so I gotta take the negative out. And I can also divide all these terms by five, which means that I'm actually gonna divide everything by negative five. And I see that I get zero is equal to positive t squared plus two t minus at this point, I'm going to state that 0 is equal to, factoring by inspection, two numbers that have a product of negative 8 but add up to positive 2, t plus 4 times t minus 2. Well, I have two possibilities here. In one case, if t plus 4 is equal to 0, then t would equal negative 4. In this case, if t minus 2 is equal to 0, t would equal positive 2. Now, 
when it says the time, and the time at which the stone will hit the ground, when I'm dealing with these time problems, this answer does not make sense because I'm not traveling back in time. Only the positive one exists as a possible answer. And then I just need to state my solution. The stone will hit the ground two, using my units, seconds after it is thrown. And there's my solution. For example three, a rectangle has dimensions shown in the diagram here and here. The area of the rectangle is 12 meters squared. Write a quadratic equation in x to represent the area. Well, the area is equal to the length times the width. There's my length, there's my width, which means that I know the area is 12, and that's going to be x plus 1 times 2x minus 3. Now I also know that when I multiply this out, 12 is going to equal 2x squared minus x and then minus 3. When I move everything to one side of the equation, 0 is equal to 2x squared minus x minus 15. If I'm going to solve the equation to find the possible values of x, then I'm going to state that 0 is equal to, if I multiply the 2 and the negative 15, I'm going to get negative 30. Two factors of that that up to negative 1 are going to be positive 5 and negative 6. So I'm going to split up the middle term. 2x squared plus 5x minus 6x minus 15. Continue factoring this by grouping. And I'm going to get 0 is equal to x and 2x plus 5, and I'm going to have to divide out negative 3 and 2x plus 5. 0 is going to equal 2x plus 5 and x minus 3. Well, if 2x plus 5 is equal to 0, 2x is going to equal negative 5, or x is going to equal negative 5 over 2. In the other case, if x minus 3 is equal to 0, x is going to equal 3. Well, I can't use this solution. The reason for that is I can see right away, if I said that one side was x plus 1, if I had negative 5 over 2, plus 1 was the dimensions for one side, that would leave me with negative 3 over 2. I can't have a negative dimension, which means there's only one actual answer that makes sense here, if x happened to be 3, which means that in this case, I'm going to have the length, which is equal to 3 plus 1, or 4. I'm going to have the width, which is equal to 2 times 3 minus 3, which is going to give me 3. And then I'm going to state the solution. The dimensions are 4 meters by 3 meters.